Hi there, welcome to the final part of our three-part series on advanced body photo fitting. In this tutorial I'm going to show you some cool techniques you can use to fit and animate any picture of toys, dolls, or whatever in an unconventional pose. First, I'm going to import in this PNG image of our friend Kent. His background is already masked out as this is a transparent PNG file, so I can just continue on to the next step when the masking option comes up. In the first stage, I want to remove the mirror option and set my basic joints to their appropriate areas. The neck, waist, ankles and wrists. The next step is where I'm going to set the main joints for my character. You can see that I've moved white markers to the ends of both hands, the top of the head, as well as the ends of the toes. Take note that the knee and the waist is a little lower than normal, because this character is a little bit paunch. Let's move on to the next fitting stage, which is encompassing the actor material. Here I'm adjusting the waist for this character. Since he has a fairly large waist due to his paunchness, I'll make that a little bit larger than usual. Looks like Kent needs to eat more Subway and less cheeseburgers. His arms are fairly basic here. I'm just basically resizing all the marker borders to fit around all the arm material. If the joint is too small, then just hover the mouse inside the joint area and an enlargement indicator will appear. Now you can click and drag the joint to make it larger, which comes in handy in various fitting situations. When it comes to his conspicuously large hands, I'll have to extend the marker border to encompass those as well. At the head area, we just have to make sure that all of the actor material is encompassed as well. The neck joint can be taken care of later. At this point, the most important thing is getting all the actor material encompassed. The legs are the same thing as well. I'll just extend the borders to encompass the shoes, and that's it. We can do refinements later. I've now processed my character, and you can see that although he looks fine, when I lift his arm there is major overlap. I can launch my character parts in this step of the actor fitting process, or I can launch it later in the character composer to make further edits. I'll just launch this part now, and it will appear in Photoshop. What I'm doing here is similar to what I did in the previous fitting tutorials. Just using the pen tool, select the path, then turning the path into a selection and deleting it. Once this is deleted, I need to go to the menu and select Save. Now when I return to Animator, you can see the difference between the upper and lower arm. The lower arm still has overlap, while the upper arm appears cleaner. I'll skip ahead here to the lower arm and show you another technique you can use for creating nice rounded masking areas. Here I'm using the elliptical marquee tool to create an oval selection area, with the border touching the edge of Kent's sleeve. I can move the selected area around to match up with the very edge of his sleeve. What I want to do now is inverse the selection. This means that all the selected area will be open to editing. Now I can simply select the erase tool and easily clean up the edge of his sleeve. Enlarge the brush size easily by using the brackets on your keyboard. I can save my actor fitting file whenever I want and come back to edit it at a later date, which is what I'm doing here. For now, I'm going to save it and proceed to import in my character. By default, Animator will ask you if you want to continue to face fitting, but in this example I'm just going to concentrate on the body fitting for now. I'm in character composer mode now, and it's time to do some further edits to the rest of the body. I'll quickly do his left arm here now. In character composer mode, there is a launch button on the left menu that will launch you into your photo editing program. I'm simply going to follow the same procedure as I did with the right arm by using the pen tool to quickly select the area I want to crop out, transforming it into a selection, and then deleting it. Let's move on to the left hand now, which is in some sort of weird pose. I'm using the pen tool step on the cuff of his sleeve just to get that out of the way first. I've noticed there's a bit of overlap around the edges of the wrist, as well as by the side of the fingers. 
I'll just simply use the Erase tool to get that out of the way. After I've saved that, I can see back in Composer mode that I can now rotate the hand around in many directions and still get a pretty good effect. I'll move on to the left forearm now. This one is in a little bit of a strange position, but it can still be animated quite well. After I've finished cutting out that bit of extraneous material, I'll move on to the wrist area. Essentially here I want to create a rounded area on which the hand can rotate and still show good animation results. I've used the white paint tool to paint a circular area to cover the skin, but the color doesn't really match and would probably produce a sloppy looking animation. If I hold down the Alt key, my cursor will change into an eyedropper tool, where I can select an area that is a little bit grayer, then release the Alt key and begin painting over the pasty white area. When I've finished that, I can test both elbow and wrist joints, and see that they rotate fairly nicely. Now onto the head. I want to make sure the head is independent and that there is no neck material. I'll use that same ellipse marquee tool procedure to help trim the bottom of the chin. I want to get a little bit more detailed, so I'm going to zoom into the chin and use the pen tool again to select my area, then clean up the chin a little bit. I'll go ahead and save that, and now you can see back in Composer, my head has a fairly good rotation result. Now I want to move on to his hand, which is in a strange position. What I want to do with his hand is make the entire thing skin colored, and make the wrist a bit more rounded. To do this, I'll perform that same function that I did with the Ellipse Marquee tool, and erase the extra actor material. Another way you can get rid of unwanted colors or areas is to use the smudge tool, as you can see me doing here. I'm basically just clicking on the actor's skin and smudging it towards the edge of the wrist to create a more natural look. Back in composer mode, I can see that this hand looks a bit unnatural in front of the sleeve. So what I'm going to do now is go over to the scene hierarchy on the right and move it down behind the forearm. Now the movement looks a bit more natural. I'll skip ahead here to the upper torso and you can see that the defined area for my upper torso includes some waist. What I'm going to do again is cut out that waist part using the pen select tool like I did before. When I finish, it should look something like this. Notice the smooth, circular edges. These allow for better looking joint rotation. As for the neck, I want to modify that a bit too. As you can see, the material I defined for that part includes the tie, among other things, which just doesn't look right. I'll move it down the hierarchy, first to below the upper torso, then launch it in Photoshop. Here I've already cut out a large portion of the lower selection because we don't really need it. What I basically want to do is just make this neck a single colored background for the head to rotate on. So what I can do is make sure I have a neutral skin tone selected, and then use the fill tool to fill the entire selected area to a single color. Now when I rotate an animator, the neck is a bit more clean in the background. What I'm doing with the lower torso here is blending in a single color to make better animation results. For example, if a green jacket pops out under another green jacket while the character is bending, it might look a little bit strange. Therefore I'll just make it all into a single color by smudging the pants area a little higher. The area for the lower torso is really small compared to the upper torso due to Kent's proportions. The same rule applies with the legs, which is what you can see me doing here. Since the area I defined in the legs also includes some jacket, I need to get rid of that by using the smudge tool as well. Alternately, you can use other tools such as clone stamp or blur. For the lower leg, you want to cut out any remainder of the foot material, which is what I'm doing here. This is because the feet will normally rotate underneath the lower leg. Therefore, what you want to do in areas like the feet that are meant to rotate underneath is similar to what we did with the left lower arm and create a circular area with a single color, similar to the layer above it, that will blend in better with animation. That's why you can see me creating a gray circle above my shoe here when I select the foot section of the body. That way, when the foot rotates, there won't be an edgy discolored part that will stick out from the lower leg. One thing I'll need to do when the feet are finished masking is reset their default position on my character. To do this, I need to select the foot, then go into the sprite editor. As you can see, the selection box now changes to a green color. This means that all the changes I make in rotation and position are permanent. I'll position my foot to a more natural position here, then press OK. 
Now here's my character all completed and fit in stage mode. I've already given him custom fit eyes and teeth by using the face editor in composer mode. I'm giving his feet a little motion here using the puppeteering panel by masking out the top of his body. Now I've found my ideal action, I can record it. As you can see, now Kent is skipping along. Now I'll choose an upper puppeteering motion for my character and mask out the body. Once I do that and record it, then I'll scrub back to the beginning and use the facial puppeteering to give him a happy expression. You can see me here previewing the different facial expressions that our character can now make thanks to the facial puppeteering panel in Crazy Talk Animator. I can rotate the mouse around to give him an angry look or change to another default profile to make him happy. Once I choose a profile, I simply need to record that over the body puppeteering and I have my full action with expression. We've now taken Kent from a toy to a happy dancing animated character.